Hello, my name is Alexa Ramos and today I'm going to be talking about the use of ammonia inhalants in a dental practice. Ammonia inhalants are also called smelling salts and are used for patients who are experiencing syncope, which is also known as fainting or passing out. A brief history about smelling salts. They've been around since ancient Roman times and were mentioned in old writings and they were formed from the distillation of an ammonia solution from the shavings of deer hooves and horns and things of that nature. Smelling salts were also widely used in the Victorian British era because women used to faint frequently due to their tight corsets. Smelling salts were also widely used in World War II. Smelling salts usual active compound is a substance called ammonium carbonate, which is a colorless to white crystalline solid. Most modern solutions of smelling salts contain water or other products to perfume or act in conjunction with the ammonia such as lavender or elliptic elliptic oil. Um, historically, smelling salts are used for people who are feeling faint or have fainted. It's typically administered by others but may be self-administered to some at-risk groups of people such as pregnant women may be advised by their doctor to keep smelling salts on them just in case they're feeling faint or something. Smelling salts are very often used in athletes, particularly boxers, who have been dazed or knocked unconscious just to restore their consciousness, consciousness and mental alertness just and wake them up. So once a smelling salt is broken open, it releases an ammonia gas which triggers an inhalation reflex that causes the muscles that control breathing to work faster. It does this by irritating the mucosa membranes of the nose and lungs. Smelling salts raise heart rate, blood pressure, and brain activity by activating the sympathetic nervous system. When a patient faints, it can be caused by excess parasympathetic activity that slows down their heart rate and decreases perfusion of the brain. The sympathetic irritant effect, aka the smelling salt, is exploited to counteract the parasympathetic effects, thus reversing the fainting spell. Now I'll explain the proper procedure in administering smelling salts to a patient who experienced syncope. This is what the ammonia inhalant packaging usually looks like, although there are several different brands used in the dental practice. This is what a smelling salt looks like up close and personal. When a patient is experiencing syncope, you must hold the inhalant away from your face and crush it between your thumb and forefingers. Then you must carefully approach the patient placing the crushed inhalant underneath his or her nostril for about 10 to 15 seconds or until he or she regains consciousness. There are no serious risks with using smelling salts. However, ammonia gas is toxic in a large concentration for prolonged periods of time. It can also be fatal. But since smelling small salts produce only a small amount of ammonia gas, no serious adverse health problems have been reported. However, a high concentration of an inhaled ammonia can burn nasal or oral mucosa. I personally believe it is absolutely integral to have ammonia inhalants in any dental practice setting because syncope does occur often due to dental anxiety, nervousness, the list goes on and on. As dental hygienists, we need to be prepared for these types of medical emergencies and with ammonia inhalants, we are more well equipped to handle syncope.